Hey YouTube friends, Ben Ochart here, and thank you so much for tuning in. I want to tell you about a trip I took that started in beautiful Morro Bay, California. Morro Bay is famous for, among other things, the population of sea otters that live and play in the Morro Bay area. A group of sea otters can be referred to as a romp of otters, and if you watch otters for a while, it becomes clear why they're called that. <laughs> They play constantly. Morro Bay, of course, is best known for the large rock formation that sits out there. And we left Morro Bay and went two hours north and went to the Monterey Bay Aquarium. This is a famous aquarium, gave me an opportunity to connect with some family members. And um, the first spot that we saw was the eels. These are green, they look like green silk. They seemed rather docile. They seemed to come out. They come out at night to eat. I certainly would not want to run into one. The um, exhibits included some very nice, uh, what you would call shellfish or crustacean, including these shrimp. And uh, this lobster, which I believe is a California lobster because it doesn't have claws. Of course, it's illegal to have a claw if you're a lobster in California. That's a California joke. <laughs> At any rate, these are crabs that actually have the capability to drift. How would you like to have uh, this coming at you as you were uh, snorkeling? I think my son referred to it as a sea spider. No, that would be no fun. Very interesting crab. I think as they get older, they tend to hang out more on the, uh, on the ground, on the substrate. Also, that's a beautiful coral you'll see throughout this video. It's like an alien. We also saw some beautiful squid. These, of course, are a small, young variety. Squid can become quite large. There's also some fish that are referred to as look-down fish. These fish look like, um, like somebody stamped out pieces of aluminum foil. They're about, um, about a half inch wide and about a foot tall. Very unusual looking fish who seem to be content spending their lives uh, swimming in circles, all moving in the same direction. Look-down fish. A local fish store used to have a tank full of these things. Very interesting looking fish. There are other types of uh, schooling fish, minnows and uh, sardines and other kinds of fish that at times were in the larger, in the larger displays and you could see them actually as a group staying out of the way of bigger fish. And I'm pretty sure that some of the fish, for example, this shark here, will occasionally uh, take one of those as a snack. There are different levels of life that you can see in the uh, kelp forest displays. Very, very interesting. This is a, a um, mangrove, a display that simulated an area where roots thick roots are coming out of the uh, out of the sand and it shows how the fish live and interact in that kind of a system so there were smaller um, displays like this one and then there were enormous displays with hundreds of thousands of gallons like the one that contained this fish here which i think is a uh, i believe this is a pike i thought it was a sturgeon at first but this guy was probably about six feet, probably uh, close to a hundred pounds, just an enormous fish. And he had other very, very large fish in the aquarium with him. This one here, it's, um, was about five feet, five feet long and maybe about a foot and a half wide, probably two, 300 pounds. Here's a very unusual fish, about four and a half feet long very odd face and odd coloration. Very interesting in the large kelp beds. I also spotted a fish very similar to the Garibaldi. 
the Golden State, California, has a golden fish called a Garibaldi, which, Garibaldi, which you see all around Catalina Island. This fish reminded me of that. And, of course, there were many varieties of sharks, big ones, throughout the, uh, throughout the large displays. Somehow these all got along, including this large turtle. This turtle is the size of a Volkswagen. He was just simply enormous. You see some mahi-mahi back there. That's a, uh, I believe, what they refer to sometimes as a Hawaiian dolphin. And uh, again, an enormous display with thousands of gallons of water. I have no idea how old this uh, turtle must be, but he was, uh, I'm not exaggerating when I say he was the size of a, uh, of a Volkswagen. This will give you an idea of the uh, size of these displays. They capture the, uh, the depth of the bay. These are called, this is a uh, garden snake, and it's literally a garden of small snakes that live in the ocean. Certainly not something I would want to bump into. The snakes themselves are very small. And I'm not sure if they deliver any kind of a poisonous bite, but not something I'm willing to uh, experiment with. There were also very small jellyfish. I found these very, very interesting. Like this one here that creates um, light reds and greens and has tentacles that are about 10 feet long that it uses to gather food. Simply fascinating. There was another light producing jellyfish called a comb jellyfish, about five inches across. And as you can see, creating reds, yellows, greens. Not what you think of when you think of a jellyfish. These jellyfish are called lunas, which is Spanish for moon. And they look like little full moons. This is a baby variety of the Luna. This uh, type of jellyfish here is more of what I think of when I think of a jellyfish. These were about a foot to two feet across with anywhere from 15 to 20 feet of that tentacle structure coming out of the main body. This jellyfish had a shorter, a shorter um, tendril or but still beautiful creatures and not creatures I would want to tangle with. I was actually surprised at how much they actually propel around. They're constantly, uh, constantly pumping and pushing themselves around the tank, often bumping into each other. Perhaps that has something to do with um, breathing, certainly with eating and I believe their food is gathered up th from those tendrils. These are the Luna jellyfish in a larger, older variety. These were about a foot across. And as you can see, beautiful, mesmerizing, uh, hypnotic motion as they move through the water. Crowds were uh, gathered around these jellyfish exhibits and they would just stand there for long periods of time. Certainly one of the most popular exhibits at the aquarium and uh, certainly in my mind one of the most interesting. But um, there was one that I found a bit more intriguing for me and maybe it's because I'm a fish keeper and tank keeper and that was the the salt water, the smaller fish that were kept in salt water aquarium setups, like this one at the Baja California exhibit. The um, combination of fish and the hard and soft scape, soft corals, hard corals, anemones, and other types of things that were living in the in these saltwater displays were simply stunning. And you know I'm crazy about um, freshwater fish. I certainly love the cichlids. 
but I mean, let's face it, when it comes to sheer color, you simply can't, um, you can't beat saltwater fish. They really are the, uh, the king of color. Whether you're talking about colors, patterns, color combinations, different hues and tints and variations. And then when you add into that the possible combinations available in coral, I mean, I actually started thinking as I was looking at these tanks, how in the world could I set one of these up and get one going? Because um, there's just nothing like them. When you consider that those corals are living and you look at the co color combinations in these fish, it's simply uh, breathtaking. So I love those jellyfish and I love the, uh, I certainly love the otter exhibit, the penguin exhibit, the puffin exhibit. Uh, those sharks were very impressive. The turtle was amazing. But I'll tell you, this is where, um, this is where I found the greatest amount of enjoyment and where I was certainly most interested. So I want you to know that to uh, bring you this, this uh, footage, I put myself in personal peril and at one point was uh, actually caught in a giant clam. But fortunately, my, uh, my wife was there and, and she pulled me out. <laughs> so if you're ever in the Monterey, California area, I encourage you to uh, come up and visit the Monterey Bay Aquarium. They're doing a lot of great things uh, for the bay in the form of education and uh, really maintaining the bay and really getting folks uh, conscious and aware of how important it is for all of these different types of uh, creatures to uh, continue to thrive and play a role in the ecosystem. So uh, visit Monterey Bay Aquarium. You will not be disappointed, my friend.